The story of Canada begins during the American War of Independence. The colonies of North are fighting against American colonies to the South, and the Americans win. The British set up Canada into a multiple mega colonies. There's Newfoundland, the Maritimes, Canada, the Territories, Rupert's Land, and Columbia. But soon the Maritime splinters off into Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. The colony of Canada had a very strange political system compared to most. There was no legislation in place to allow for the government to run if there was an election. During a heated debate as to where the capital of Canada should be, John A. Macdonald and his party, the East Canada Party, opposed the capital moving from Montreal to Quebec City. When this vote happened, a large number of his government members crossed the floor to vote in favor of Quebec City. Members of Macdonald's party, forming the government, resigned over this. Without a government, the Governor General asked the opposition government to form a new government. However, to form a new government, they have to vacate their seats and go into a by-election. In this wonky system, there was no way for the government to run during an election, and so the most senior former minister available to run the government is asked to step forward, and that was John A. Macdonald. Without anyone to oppose him, he soundly defeated the bill to move the capital to Quebec City. This move made him so popular across the colony that the opposition were kicked out of office in the by-election. Macdonald learned early on the tricks of getting things done in this world it meant being just a little bit corrupt. Macdonald, as Prime Minister of Canada, began handing out contracts to railway companies to expand the rail across Canada. The railway companies that would get the jobs were more often those that would pay his party the largest campaign donations. With thousands of dollars flying into his party coffers, he was able to win election after election and maintain his position as the most popular leader in the country. This was right up until his final term in office. In the final election, Macdonald and his political rival Brown were deadlocked, each having an equal number of seats in government. Macdonald offered an olive branch to Brown to form a coalition government with no opposition. Brown approved, forming a final government of the colony of Canada, a dictatorship. The two formed the Liberal Conservative Party, which would reflect the values of both ideologies. Two years later, Charles Tupper organized the Charlottetown Conference. Tupper was a British bureaucrat who was more or less sick of England ignoring his wishes. He felt if he could form the Maritime Union with New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, he would have more power when going before England over anything. And Canada wasn't even invited. I mean, Newfoundland was invited as an observer, but Canada wasn't even considered for this Maritime Union. However, one day, John A. called Tupper and asks, uh, can I come? And Tupper said, uh, sure? Tupper thought he was running the show, trying to sell all the benefits of a United Maritime, but really it was McDonald's show. McDonald was like a child jumping on a bed, constantly screaming, Railroad! 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 All of McDonald's railroad buddies really wanted some fresh contracts, and across Canada, railroad would enrich them for generations. Representing New Brunswick was Samuel Leonard Tilly. Tilly was less interested in an economic union and more of a military union. As a united country, they would be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against the United States if another War of 1812 was to break out. The Americans were looking even more and more threatening with every passing year. America was in civil war, but if the wrong side won, they could just annex Canada. As always, there was a holdout, and it was Tilly. New Brunswick wasn't really interested in joining a union with the colony of Canada. It was kind of this awkward situation here. You had Nova Scotia, trying to call it the United States of British America, and you had Canada wanting to call it the Commonwealth of Canada. All the other players were legitimately afraid that the colony of Canada would have far too much power in this new Canadian project. They wanted to keep their colonial identities while also still having a great state represent their inter-colony trade and inter-country commerce. Macdonald wanted a strong central government because he looked to the South and saw the American Civil War as evidence of what a weak state would do. They decided they would leave this conference and come up with new ideas to resolve these problems at the next one. When Tilly returned home, he found that the people of New Brunswick were not very happy with him, and so began the anti-confederation movement. Tilly only had one year left on his term as premier, and so the next conference would have to solve every issue and be brought to a close as quickly as possible. A few months later, Johnny McDonald quickly put together a conference in Quebec City. 
The delegates agreed that they would have its writings divided based on populations. They also agreed to a second house, the Senate, which would be appointed, but would have an even number of senators per region. With these strict residency requirements, it also meant that British nobles could no longer be expected to get patronage positions in Canada. Johnny MacDonald got everyone to agree to one thing ahead of the Confederation. There would be an intercolonial railway, even if there was no Canada. They also agreed to 72 resolutions they would take back to their parliaments for discussion. Tilly returned home to an election. The anti-Confederate party was led by Albert Smith, who was a direct descendant from British loyalists, and Tilly lost. Smith put the vote of the 72 resolutions just so that his majority government could show everyone else that they opposed him. Shortly after this act, Queen Victoria asked the Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick to dissolve their government and force another election. The move for a Canadian Confederation became more popular in England than in Canada. The threat of war with America was growing and the thought if they loosed themselves of Canada, their risks of getting dragged into a war would be lower. The fact that they could pull their troops out of Canada meant they could ease tensions between the two colonies. Johnny MacDonald was sending funds to Tilly's new confederation party that was being run by Peter Mitchell as the candidate. Mitchell had attended both conferences and had shown the strongest support for confederation of all the delegates. After he won, he immediately put the 72 resolution to a vote, and it passed. All the delegates would meet in London to sign the agreement. The British North America Acts was signed in British Parliament. Canada East would become Quebec. Canada West would become Ontario. You see, Canada didn't want American traditions of John Locke. Canada wanted the organic constitution of Edmund Burke. Canada wanted Britain to still be able to intervene in their affairs if a third party was needed to solve disputes between the provinces. Canada wouldn't rid itself of Britain until 1931 and wouldn't have a constitution of its own until 1982. The original organic constitution of Canada was filled with commitments and pledges that would last for all of time, but could be modified to fit modern times. The British North America Acts would in fact have to be ratified in England to make any changes. One of the original agreements for Prince Edward Island to join Canada was a permanent ferry service to connect the small island to Canada. In 1997, this agreement was voided after the completion of a permanent link to Canada, the Confederation Bridge. In the years that passed, Canada would expand west with the promise of linking the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, with a cross-Canada railway sold, of course, by Johnny MacDonald, eventually people would find out that MacDonald was taking a little bit off the top. But that's a story for another time.